Hello, it looks like I've joined from the wrong account. So I'm gonna drop off and join again from the correct account so that I can turn on the recording. Be right back.
That's better. Now I am here and I can rename myself. And I now have permission to switch the recording on. Very good. Let's see, and I should do just to see. Okay, checking my audio. Perfect. Hello, Sharon, welcome. Thank you. What did I do with our notes document? Blog post, maybe I put it at the bottom. Hmm. Huh, that's completely strange. I don't know what I did with our notes document. Have I not been taking notes while we've met together? Well, let's see. Hmm. Ah, I've got a folder. Hmm. No. Okay. Well, I like to start on time. So let's, I'm going to turn, oh, and it's already recording. That's even better. Great. So we're recording and thank you for being with us. We intentionally don't enable video because that way you can join from low band, lower bandwidth connections if that helps. Uh, the recording will be posted after we're done uh, and Thanks very much. So I guess the first opening is, are there questions that you have that you'd like to ask or things where Kristen or I could be of help? Um, Okay. Yeah, so go ahead, Cynthia. Your question would be great. Okay. It's not, I have some internet. Um, so my question is, what's different in the Jenkins and other the plugins? Um, because I did when I was trying to work on it on the 
um, I couldn't see like a HPI and they, they, they failed to use so I can upload it in like the, I can upload it locally. So yeah, I, I'm just curious to know the difference between the Jenkins core and the plugins. Right, sure. Friends. Okay, so so let me. I'm going to try to say back to you what I think your question is. You can then correct me if I'm wrong on what the question is. So your question is, what's the distinction between a Jenkins plugin, where in order to see changes to the plugin, you upload the HPI file into Jenkins and look at it, or your work in Jenkins Core? And by the way, you just submitted a pull request to Jenkins Core. Well done. Um, that has a proposed example in that pull request, but you don't use an HPI file to work with Jenkins core. Is that, did I get your question correct? So Cynthia, you may still be muted. Did, did I restate your question correctly, Cynthia, that you're trying to understand the difference between Jenkins core and a plugin and the development environment experience that you had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had some internet connection issues. We didn't hear that. Yeah, that's the question. Okay, great. So, so the, the distinction there is that Jenkins core as a single monolithic Java application when you need to make changes to Jenkins core, it's right inside the Jenkins core and then it has to be recompiled or, or reloaded. There are actually ways to do the same, same style of interaction with Jenkins core as you do with plugins. It actually could be a little easier. It's just uncommon that you need to make a change in Jenkins core. So the Maven, and I believe in that case, it's called jetty colon run command will let you run Jenkins and then it will automatically reload for you from changes you make on the file system. So, so there is a distinction and, and it looks like you handled the distinction well enough to be able to submit the document, a, a proposed improvement for an example to Jenkins core. Now I haven't reviewed it yet and I'll review that later today, probably in the next two or three hours and give feedback on it. Jenkins core has a pretty, a, a well-defined way of handling pull requests. It is that we need two approvers and we need after two approvers have given, yes, it's okay. We put a, a, a marker up that says, this is ready for merge and in 24 hours, we will do the merge. So Esther, I went ahead and muted you. We had um, noise, sound from the background that sounded like automobiles. Kristen, I believe is also one who's eligible to approve proposed changes to Jenkins core. And so it may be that we have enough approvals even to merge yours before the start of Monday's working day. Okay, thanks. Was there, did you have additional questions related to that or, or things that you found perplexing? I'm, I was really pleased. I wasn't expecting any of, any of you to submit changes to Jenkins core and I'm delighted that you did and you found, found a way to do it yourself. Well done. Did you, did you before you mm -hmm. submitted your pull request to Jenkins core, did you actually build Jenkins core and see that the text was visible? Yeah, so that's the issue I faced, but um, Angelique um, sent me some of the code I can use to run it locally, so I need to do that. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah congratulations. Thank you. And Esther, no problem. Your not being on mute was not a problem at all. We understand that we all have lives and our lives have sound in the background sometimes. That's not a, not, nothing wrong with that.
are there other questions that you have? If not, what I was going to do was I was going to go through the, the various documents that you've been using, and I was going to share those on screen and see if I could ask each of you in turn if there were things you you experienced that you wanted to help with or uh, other areas based on the documents that we've been collecting. Oh, I, I actually have questions. Oh, go ahead, Esther. Okay. So I looked in Oh, sorry, I may have misinterpreted, Buster. I thought you said you, you had questions. I gather you may have said you had no questions. Okay. Well, well, I, you, I, have, I have questions. I'm about to I wrote them down, so. I'm not sure how to add um, online help for the documentation. I've gone to the staff um, the steps and everything, but I'm still a bit confused. So what I did was I added um, I added help for my local login, but I'm not sure how that's supposed to be well, like on the yeah. online. Okay, so you said that you added help for your plugin, but you're not sure. And then I lost the last one or two words there. Could you say those again? You're not sure. Say that sentence again for me. I think I'm not sure how it's going to reflect on the online documentation, like how I'm going to add examples and all that. Okay, so, so you added the help, but you're not sure how it's going to look when, when seen online. So we could show today how to view that online uh, from, from the computer where you're doing the checking that it actually works, uh, if that really would help. Good, Mark. That might be really good. And because that was something okay. that I know yeah. that I learned about when I was doing this, is that you can actually preview your stuff it's from Jenkins. That's really cool. Yeah, so Esther, would that be okay if we did it that way? Okay, and, and Esther, also, are you? Um, oh. The um, help that we're adding, is it for the syntax generator or for the documentation or do they work together? It, it actually ends up in both places. So when you add the help, that's a very good question. When you add help to a Jenkins pipeline, implementation inside a Jenkins plugin. So, so for instance, in your case, I think you're working on the pipeline nodes and processes um, plugin. Yeah. So if you add help or improve the help for the bat uh, step or for the node step, or for the PowerShell step, any one of those steps, when you do that, it will be included into the next, and once the pull request is merged, it will be included in the next release of that plugin. And after that next release of that plugin, it will also be visible on the www.jenkins.io site after that plugin has released. So it would both be available online in every user's Jenkins installation that has installed the plugin and on the master documentation page at www.jenkins.io. And you can actually thank Kristen for that because she wrote the original tool that reads the contents of the released plugin and publishes it, makes it ready for use on www.jenkins.io. Okay, thank you. So now, Esther, are you developing on Windows, on Linux, or something different? I'm working. Sorry, go ahead and say that again. Windows or Linux or Mac? 
Windows. Windows. Okay. So if it, if it's all right, um, it'll take a little bit more time to show the demo on Windows. But I'm on Windows, so maybe it's if it's okay with you and with others, I'll show it on Windows, and that way, uh, the recording may be more helpful if you need to look at it later. Okay. Thank you. Great. All right. So I'm going to just start sharing my screen and we're going to go through a how do you how do you do Jenkins on a Windows computer and then how do we work with a plugin and Esther if it's okay with you I'm going to use the nodes and processes plugin or would people prefer that I use something different that none of you have done yet nodes and processes is easy enough and it's a, a good excuse to make something that might be helpful. So I'm going to start sharing my screen now. All right, so you should see what looks like a terminal window. In my case, it's a git bash window. And I'm going to first update from from the remote repository so that I've got everything that's latest for Jenkins. And this one, it's been a while, obviously, since I updated it. So here is here is the most recent requests. And for my benefit, uh, yeah, let's I'm now going to read the I'm going to open up the the files that are on that directory and in it there's this contributing.md file and it contains inside of it the instructions on how to do a build. So this is the command I want to use. It says if you want to just build it as fast as possible without test, just do this. So I'm just going to copy that and go ahead and run here. Now we've, I've found, at least from my observation, that Windows tends to run a little bit slower than my Linux experiences do. I assume that's because of virus scanning that's happening and other conveniences. So this may take a little bit and we'll talk while it's, while it's building. So right now what it's doing is it's downloading dependencies, making sure it has the most current dependencies. And now it's going to start the compilation process. So back to where I was, I was in the Git repository and there's this contributing file that has those instructions after this, after this compilation process finishes, I will then just run Jenkins with this command, maven minus pl war jetty colon run. And, and so then, then once I'm doing that, I will probably need an additional window. So I'm gonna start another window and here, oops. Okay, so here, I think we said we wanted to use pipeline nodes and processes. So for that, this is the pipeline nodes and processes page. And it tells me, oh, I can see that plugin on the site and then over here is the github link and i'm going to click that github link it will take me there now because i always like to work in a fork i'm going to fork here and put it into my repository and now i need to clone it locally so I'm going to copy that URL and into that terminal window that I had, into that git window, I'm just going to say git clone that. Okay, so workflow durable task step. Uh, 
And so now usually inside inside these things, there is typically a, a hint how to build it. This one, maybe not. I'm just used to doing Maven, clean, skip tests, install. Kristen, I think that's a reasonable way to do it. If I remember correctly for, for others, are there better suggestions you have to offer than clean install? Or is that a workable way to do a build to get started on a plugin? Install works just as long as it ends up creating the package or like it ends up um, going through the package step at the end of Maven and, and install will do it as long as it's okay. hard. Yeah. And while while that's running, let's take a quick look and see how my how my other so the Jenkins build is right now doing some work with node and yarn so it's it's making progress so the idea then is that what i'll do is i will run jenkins from here and initially i'm going to choose to install the plugin as released after installing the plugin that's released i'll just use the jenkins ui to do that then I want to be able to make small changes to this plugin that I just created locally, compile it, and prove that my changes are visible. So let's see. So if we look for a, an HTML file, there are a few. And so maybe we want to edit, let's see, how about, Workspace step. I've got to look at some of the choices here. Which one should we do? So there are, if we look at the Jenkins documentation, documentation, pipeline, pipeline steps, reference. And now we're looking for nodes and processes. Okay, so we could look, we could fill something in for WS to allocate a workspace. Yeah, this is a, this is a reasonable one to add an example to. So how about let's try adding an example to allocate workspace. So I, I suspect it's this one right here. And there's the text. So we see the text on screen. It says allocates a workspace. And this might be where we would say, let's see, how about like this? And now I need to remember that we're using, if I remember right, right, Kristen, this requires a rigorous uh, matching of paragraph start and end. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's acting like this is an XML file, even though the suffix is HTML, if I remember correctly, right? Something like that where, okay, so, and then, and if I want to do a break, I have to say something like that. Oh, actually, maybe it's even better. Let's just use paragraph markup like it's supposed to be. So here is this. And now I'm going to, in a new paragraph, and something like uh, to allocate a workspace in a subdirectory. No, no, this is not necessarily a subdirectory, right? It is, I just say, dir, and it gives, 
well, let's try it. This is why we experiment. Subdirectory. So I'm used to the dir syntax. So if I said ws, and it takes an argument dir colon uh, slash t slash. Let's try home mark e. And I don't know that we want this the final way, but let's put it in there and we'll experiment with it because this way we can test the test the thing to see that it does. Okay, so now uh, bat and oops. Script echo hello world. Okay, so I've written some something and we should be able to see that. Now let's go see how my Jenkins build is doing. And not that one. This one is right here. Okay, so now let's do the next step, which was read the directions. And it says maven minus pl war jetty colon run. So copy that. Just excuse me just a minute. Okay, so maven minus PL war jetty colon run. So I'm going to run Jenkins on my computer. Okay, starting. Hasn't told me it's okay, there we go. Okay, so that message, I think, tells me that if I look now at localhost port 8080 slash Jenkins, it will tell me there's a Jenkins server running there. And there it is. So that localhost colon 80, and this is a brand new empty Jenkins. Now we see the, the nice little warnings over here. It says oh, Jenkins is currently unsecured and allows anyone on the network to launch processes on your behalf, secure it. Well, in this particular case, that message is misleading because the only ones that can connect to this process right now is me on my local computer. It's intentionally started that it only listens to things from my local computer. So for as a developer, it's safe for you to do this inside your environment. Other, other developers or attackers, for instance, can't reach this because it's not listening to them. It's only listening to connections on localhost. So now if we look at the list of plugins, we should see installed, none. Okay, so I want to get nodes and processes. There it is. So this is the one we're going to work on. So I'm going to check that and click the down, download now and install. Let's try install without restart. Now you'll notice it loads a number of other plugins. What it did is it contacted the Jenkins Update Center, asked for this plugin, and then read its list of dependencies and then requested all those dependencies. So now if we got that correct, I should be able to see in pipeline-syntax, oops, that didn't like me. Let's restart it, shall we? So I'm gonna restart it because I was expect. oh yeah, it doesn't know about a pipeline job yet. I wonder, so maybe Kristen, do I need to install declarative pipeline in addition? Did I make a mistake here? 
because for instance, I may not have, it may not have installed declarative. It did not. Okay, so I need to install another plugin. I made a mistake. It's this thing, pipeline colon declarative, that I also want because I'm going to be doing some work with declarative pipeline here and notice it listed a whole number of right. other dependencies and bringing those in. So I had not installed pipeline basic steps or pipeline multi branch. It's taking care of all installing all those for me. Right, I was almost a little surprised that pipeline wasn't included <laughs> in the list of, I mean, I could maybe see declarative, but some of this other stuff. So it's good to get it all pulled in. Right, okay. All right, now let's check it and see if pipeline dash syntax. Yes, okay, good, here we go. All right, so now I've got bat and here is Let's see, the one I used was, the one I modified was WS, Allocate Workspace. And if we look here, we'll see there's online help on the help over there. This is the original in the released version of the plugin. And this one gives, okay, more about the, the custom location. And let's say uh, a custom dir name. Now when I generate pipeline script, this shows up as a custom dir slash name. Okay, so that's that's good. Now, however, we want to take my modified um, plugin. I need to build it. And then I'm going to load that modified plugin into Jenkins and see if I can see the change I made to the text. Okay, so it's built. If I do a get diff, it will tell me there is my change. This green text is my hint of what's changed. And in the target directory, we'll see a workflow durable task step.hpi. So what I want to do now is go to Jenkins manage plugins. And I am going to go to the advanced tab, click, and I want to upload a file by clicking choose file. And now I need to go find my home directory. And it was my Git directory, Jenkins, workflow durable task step, target. And there is that HPI file. If I open that and then click upload. Now notice what it says here. It says workflow durable task step plugin is already installed. Jenkins needs to be restarted for the update to take effect. So I need to restart Jenkins. And the easy way to do that is I go here and if it works the way it usually does, what I'll do is I'll hit enter and that stops and restarts Jenkins. So all I did was press the enter key or the return key for it to stop and restart Jenkins. And if we now look at this page, it's going to tell us that Jenkins is restarting. So what did I do? I used my web browser to upload Jenk, upload the new plugin. Then I hit enter in the terminal window where I was running Jenkins from the Maven jetty colon run command line. And now here I am. Now, if I look at manage Jenkins and I go to manage plugins, oh, uh oh, plugin is missing. Did I make a mistake? Oh, this is fun. Pipeline is, pipeline is missing. Workflow durable task step. Oh, that's fascinating. So Jenkins tells me something went wrong in trying to build it or trying to load that plugin. Let's figure it out. 
Oh, oh, wait a second. Wait, you know what mistake I made? <laughs> oh, oh, this is shameful, Kristen. I am so ashamed of the mistake I made because guess what I did? I probably already had a fork of this of this oh, and wow. it's okay. older. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So so please forgive my mistake. Let me describe my mistake in case somebody else makes my mistake. So I think anyway, let me so I think what happened here is I have cloned a copy of workflow durable task step. And I cloned it from my repository, which is exactly the right thing to do, except my repository is probably out of date with the upstream repository. So I need to do something additional. I need to add the upstream repository. And in this case, that's github.com slash Jenkins CI slash workflow durable task step. Okay, so don't tell anybody how shameful that is that I didn't think of this. Get fetch minus minus all. So this will pull in changes, git merge upstream slash master. No, no, I don't understand what mistake I've made. Because normally okay. I think that your version of workflow is like what I would have done is maybe check the workflow durable task step, like your palm file to see if that was at the right. Yeah, direction. which, and this says that it should be. So if I look here, it says that the version number is 2.39. So it's newer. It's building a snapshot version. Why did it not load? Interesting. Okay, let's go look at manage plugins and see what happened. So is there an pipeline model definition failed to load pipeline basic steps, failed to load pipeline basic steps. Oh, look, I'm unable to delete. Ah, I'm now being, okay, got it. I'm now being hit by the fun of the Windows file system. Oh, Lucky okay. me. Okay. okay, so so this is yeah. this message. Okay, good that we get to diagnose it live. This huh. message says that Jenkins, in trying to do the restart, was unable to remove something it was trying to remove because the directory was busy because of the way the Windows file system behaves. So I have to do this a little bit harder way and this is what I've got to do instead of, oh, and look, here it is, the message in, in the console window. If I just come here to look, I could have seen the exact same message as saying, guess what? Something went wrong. It cannot access the file because it's in use by another process. And what that is, is the Windows file system saying, ah, I can't remove a busy file. So I'm going to stop it. I've stopped it. Now I'm going to restart actually. And now where is, when I run from here, does it put the files in the work directory? No. Well, let me just so run it you, again. Yeah, so yeah. Did you see that, I guess like the path shows you where your- Oh, it does, right, doesn't is. it? It says right where it's going. It says- yeah. I should just read what's in front of me. That's it says, <laughs> There's a lot. Jenkins, Jenkins war. There we go. So this one, it's in the, the war work plugins directory. So, uh, so that was in the war work directory, war slash work. And here is a Jenkins installation. And now if I look in plugins, and this, just in case, ah, yes, here is, notice that there's a workflow durable task step dot back. And I'm going to remove this directory just to be absolutely sure. Okay, so workflow durable task step dot JPI. And now I think I'm ready to do that start again.
There we go. So now I'm going to run Jenkins again. So it looks like for the, the, the press return to restart Jenkins workflow isn't as tidy on Windows as I would have liked it to be because of the busy file, the busy file problem that the Windows file system has on Linux or on Mac OS, you'd see that pressing enter just lets you switch and it will restart Jenkins. So now let's try here and we should see this now saying Jenkins is starting. Okay, now let's look at the installed plugins. And what we should see is that the nodes and processes, this one has a, a different non-released non -released version number. In my case, it says it was built by Mark E. That's me, it was built using this particular point in the history and it's a private snapshot of 2.39. So that, that is the right thing. And now if we look at the pipeline syntax, and here, if we go to the WS step, if we click on this help, there's the example. Although look at that, that formatting is terrible. Okay, so what mistake did I make? Well. I didn't put line breaks into that. I didn't put explicit line breaks in, did I? Yeah, but this, this is good because now we can see like this is, now you can see what it does look like. Right, <laughs> right. It's displayed. So now you know that you can go and tweak it and maybe, you know, change how you'd like it to look, but, and this is the best way to look at what it, Egg. this exact piece from this overview. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. Like this would what would show up on the website. So this is how you know what it would look like. So yeah, and that <laughs> Kristen is exactly right. That's a brilliant this this is yeah, you described it perfectly, Kristen. So so this whole this allows me now. I was just going to try to see if I could make an edit to it and watch it change live. Oh, cool. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, same thing. This is it's advanced. <laughs> What's that? But it, this is very advanced. So, like you know, changing it live, this is cool. So, well, and I want to see if it actually does something with it because there are cases where it's, it's where I've seen. Oh, whoops! Not archive artifact. We need WS. Okay, so now if I click this, nope. So it did not. It did not reread it from the file system, right? Oh no, no, right. Of course it didn't. What am I saying? That's that's silly, right? I was just, I, okay. Remember, it's a two-step process, right? I can't make changes inside the plugin and have those changes be immediately visible when I loaded the plugin into Jenkins because okay. it's not watching this piece of the plugin file system to, to find me. So that's not going to work. Now, I thought, though, Kristen, isn't it possible that this can work? If then I run Maven HPI colon run from the plugin directory. I wonder if that's worth, I is it worth, worth time to show that, to take that? I mean, Onyinye or, or Esther or Cynthia, do you have questions that you'd like to ask before I keep wandering on these kind of demonstration topics? Um, yeah. Okay, so I have another question for this step that doesn't have any online notes. It doesn't even have like, them. So it's a uh, it's called like, 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 so I apologize, but I didn't understand the question. Could you could you ask it again? Okay. 
Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you going to use the chat? That would be great. So while that chat question is coming in, I think I'm going to go ahead and try that next experiment, Kristen. Okay, so this was, in this window, I'm running Maven Jetty colon run from inside Jenkins core. And, and that's, that's great. But this other one, I could, I think I could run Maven HPI colon run. So now I'm inside the plugin directory. I think do you I need to do you need to stop the other one? Did you already think, stop it? Yeah, I think it stopped when I okay, when good, I exited. Good, that, let's let's prove it just to be sure. This should right. be unresponsive. Which, I think that you can't have them both running because they're both going right. to try to use the same. Exactly. Point. So yeah. So that one stopped. Good. Good point. And now I'm going to try this one. And what Maven inside the plugin directory here. If I do maven hpi colon run, what it does, if I remember correctly, is it will start a Jenkins. Oh, and I'm going to, I never remember which ver Jenkins version people are using inside their plugins. I like reasonably new versions. So I'm gonna say minus, oops, minus D Jenkins.version equals 2.277.2 because that's a current current version of Jenkins. Yes, that's a really, really, really good point. <laughs> Please <laughs> I, I, with the current version, because some of I, these I think will run very old versions because of all the backwards compatibility, so. <laughs> right, okay, oh, good, all right. And I see Esther's question. So let me get this started and then let's get to her question. So good, let's, that's a very good question. Okay, so Esther's question was, there's a step return standard out on the Google Sheets. And I think actually rather than a step, it's probably an argument and it's not available in the syntax generator or on the online doc. Okay, let's see if we can find that. That's a, that's a good question. Okay, and that if I remember right is, let me see if I can find that in the online. Okay, so return std there it is okay so what she's saying is the encoding of the process output in the case of return standard out and that's what i see here return standard out optional so let's see if we can find that return yeah okay so right. I, I i think those are the ones and Esther, you're saying you were not seeing those in the online or in the pipeline steps generator. Let's let's see if we can see them. This will be good. So Jenkins is should be running here on port 8080. Let's look and see how that process. Yeah, so here it is running. And now if this is this is a different directory than the earlier ones. So if I look at the plugins that are installed here, you'll see it's got, oh, there are some plugins that are out of date. There are plugins that need to be upgraded, but ignore all that. The nicety is there is in nodes and processes that 2.39 snapshot is still there. So now let's go to pipeline syntax. And here, if we look at, let's see, one of the steps that was telling us about return standard out was, let's choose the Windows specific one, BAT. Where was BAT? So here's BAT. And it has a return standard out argument. Let's see if we can see that in the syntax generator. So BAT, 
And now here's the help for bat, executes a bat script. And Esther's question was, hey, this does not have anything about return standard out. And it doesn't unless over here on the right, I click the advanced button. And some plugins have that advanced button just like that. Now, what we see is here is return standard out. And here is the help for return standard output. So sometimes the, the thing that we're looking for is behind an advanced button. Now let's try this. So I'm going to say echo hello world is the batch script that I want to use. And I would like to return standard out. And I want the encoding on standard out to be UTF-8 and the label. I want to only run this on the on an agent that is called master or controller. Here's the script. Okay, so there is my there is my my sample. Now if I create a new job that uses that, I'm going to create a pipeline job bat in a pipeline. And now over here, there's this sample and I'm going to use hello world that they use. They, they did echo hello world. I'm going to do bat encoding UTF-8 return standard out. And let's run it and see what happens. I think too, just kind of looking at some of the comments um, in the sheet, because I decided is like, hey, what, what are people I wasn't entirely clear about where you found the return standard out. So I was like, I just did a search on the page on the, the user documentation sheet. And it sounds like maybe another thing that we should make sure when we're going through and doing these steps is that um, there are some defaults that are selected for some of the pieces like return standard out, which could be a Boolean. Oh, right. So it might end up being that, yeah, see like a Boolean. So like maybe we just need to make sure that when we find Booleans, we should make sure we say, oh, default true because you, it becomes right. optional. So yeah, I was like, maybe that's why people um, were not entirely sure because they didn't know from this page alone that either the default is true or false. But when you do the snippet generator, um, you can easily see, right? Because you can either check the button or you, when you open the, the snippet generator, it will either be a checked box or unchecked box, but it's not clear from our documentation here what it is. So maybe, <clears throat> we should put some stuff like an actually like the last sentence would be default true or like default false that might be something that we should do for a lot of our booleans I, i'm not confident that it's we've actually done that for a lot of them but maybe maybe that would help people as well so that's that, a really that's, good find that that's on the excellent out. especially for anything that's optional right job, because Mr. for certainly an optional thing people want to know what is the default value and we ought to say exactly. default is, is in this case, default is false, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what it says? So let's go back to see what is the right. default. Because also, especially some of that help, it doesn't really make as much sense because it says if one checked, but from the pipeline script, you're like, what? Checked? Right. So, well, yeah. How, yeah. So, I'm reading so, yeah. a specification. How would I check it? So exactly. but reading it from the, the snippet generator, it's clear. Yeah. Oh, it's not checked by default. Okay. And return exit status is not checked by default. Right. So okay, that, that's now, a really good find, Esther. That, and that's maybe something we should include at the end of these. Make sure that if there's a Boolean, that we're checking what the default is and then putting that in the help in line right. as well. Very good. Well, and, good catch. and okay, there's another one hiding here. Um, this one has two checkboxes return standard output, return exit status. Mm -hmm. And I truly have no idea what happens when I check both. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's cool. Oh, I'm impressed. Okay. <laughs> I am impressed. Interesting. All right. Okay. And, but I'll bet that that is not described anywhere in the, in the help. Yes, you're right. I bet right? it's not. I'll bet that that beautiful red text is not described anywhere in the, let's see if it is just, just for fun. Let's check. So um, let's see, what was the text? It was, you may not select. 
Yeah. So no. that's not in the help. <laughs> and so that should be added to the help right. <laughs> for, for bat. Bat should get that. And I am confident that the same thing applies to, to um, PowerShell. Yeah. And the same thing applies to PWSH. And the same thing applies to SH, right? That right. each of them says, should say, oh, you can't, you can't do this or this because the reader may not realize, and, and this is another reason why we want to keep reminding people, use the snippet generator. Yes. Don't be shy <laughs> at saying use the snippet generator. It's the best way to get your job done. Good. Very good. So Esther, did that address your question? Excellent question, by the way. Thanks very much. Okay, so we're gonna. I we're we've we've taken a lot more than the thirty minutes I'd initially assumed. Are there other questions that you would like to address? So one of the things that, as sort of a, a precursor, one of the things that Meg McRoberts is going to try to do Monday in the meeting with you is show you some ways that you can go find already existing pipeline examples that may be a help for you as you're trying to add pipeline examples into the plugins that you're working on. So what she'll do is show you some different repositories and Google search techniques you can use to find other people's pipeline examples that we can borrow, that we can put into the documentation so that you don't have to spend, maybe you'll, it'll save you a little time in trying to create those examples. So my example here, let's see, where was it? My example here, hello world, might be better suited if I had done something with all the options. So this was something like echo this is a batch script, a Windows batch script. That with that returns standard out, and now this gets more complicated. So okay, we can't do that. From a, a, a controller or an agent labeled Windows labeled master. So controller or master or windows. Oops. Okay, so I've given all the options generate the pipeline script. Now it's this enormous thing. And now I'm going to go put it into my sample. Oh, I'm in the wrong step. How embarrassing. Okay, I need to go find the correct step. But the basic idea is the same thing. I would put this in here. And then I have to insert appropriate line breaks. I think we want it in code markup. Etc. Etc. Now, what does that mean with a? Oh, oh, shame on me! Right. <laughs> okay, I should have used double quotes so that I didn't have to worry about single quotes inside outside thing. And then the way this would work is def um, return value. 
equals that. And now, all right. So I think we're, we're, we're done with topics that I had intended. Do, are there other topics you'd like before we call it done for today? I, we're getting late in your day and So let's run it again just to see. We'll make our last activity seeing if, if that new added example is visible. And if I remember correctly, Maven HPI run on non-Windows has the same behavior. I can press enter to cause Jenkins to restart. So let's look at it. It'll initially tell me it's starting Jenkins. Okay, and the thing that I actually added the help to was the WS step. I know it's the wrong place. And no, that's not it. Oh, there it is. Okay, allocates a workspace. Now, I am curious, Kristen, why? Oh, oh, I see. Why the two question marks there? And I think the answer is because one is for the custom location and the other is for the, the workspace step itself. And there is my example with the awkward and embarrassing thing that I didn't get the indentation correct. Not only did I not get the, yeah, there's a lot to improve there, isn't there? But I can now see it. Anything else before we close for today? Nothing from my side. All right. So Cynthia, I'll do, I, I look forward to reviewing your pull request to Jenkins Core. If others of you are, and when others of you submit pull requests, it would help us a bunch if you could paste a link to your pull requests into the Slack channels, into the Slack channel so that we know to go review it. Or you could copy us by Let's see, let's see if I can show how you do that. If you just put a specific annotation on, on your pull request. So let's go look at Cynthia's pull request here. Added some examples of how to archive multiple artifacts. She put at Mark E. Wait, and that, was, that one sent me a reminder email, oh, I should review this. Oh, this is nice. We've even got review comments from Daniel Beck and from Kristen and Yes, Daniel noted, hey, HTML tag to break the line. Oh, oh, interesting, good, all right. Yeah, and we'll have to check for valid syntax on the example, good. Oh, uh, Ma, I, I, yes. didn't, I didn't get the feedback that Daniel uh, provided me. Meaning you didn't you didn't understand what he was saying? Is that what you're saying, Cynthia? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. And and what what I'm going to do is in my review, I will actually check interactively that the syntax is correct. And if it's not correct, I I will provide a, a correction that that you can use to to then accept my correction and update it. So I think what his concern is, he you. suspects that this is this particular statement here won't work if used inside Jenkins. And I think his reasoning for that is because this colon probably needs to replace be replaced by an opening parenthesis and then by a closed parenthesis here. That's my guess okay. anyway, but it'll be a, because I think this one will work because it doesn't have that extra character right there. Oh, I see. I, I okay. think his concern was this character is probably what will break it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I get it. Yeah, I'll remove that. Great. And and what I'll do is he he notes that I I tend to be take the next step of I'll just click this, propose this change use the same syntax in both examples. Omit the extra colon. So start a review. And now I suspect that will be enough. I'm going to, for the moment, finish the review without doing an approve because I haven't actually run it yet to be sure it works. But now what you will see, Cynthia, on your user interface is you'll see this here. I made a comment and here's my comment and you'll be able to click this button and actually say, oh yeah, I like that. I'll take that change. You can just do it right from your web, web browser without having to even go into your command line and interacting with Git. Okay, thank you. Great, very good. Anything else? All right, I'll post a copy of the, the recording of our session in the YouTube playlist for Jenkins uh, for the uh, sheet code. You can also, also check out. Oh, go ahead on Yinye. No, I really I said you could also check on my PR that I raised this evening. Oh yes, on your and your PR was your PR, your PR I think was to the artifactory repository, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, and that one that one is going to be very interesting because it actually operates with slightly different rules and and we're going so let's see if I remember right this this will then tell us where is it stored in two repositories and submit pull requests to this one. So if we go to that one and we look at your pull request, here it is, right. Good, and so this one needs, and it looks like Kristen, you, Kristen's already given some comments. And yes, so I'll need to, oh, and you've already done the CLA. Very good, excellent. And now this one may be more difficult. The, uh, I believe the maintainers of this plugin are actually based in Israel. And I don't know that we can get their attention as easily as we get the attention of, of coworkers in the company where Kristen and I work, but we will do our best. All right, so thank you. All right, thank you. Anything else for today? Yes, I have one last question. Okay, go ahead. You say you had one last question? Okay, so we have to keep um, cloning, forking, and cloning every time we want to add. Sorry, I heard an if we have, and then I lost the rest in the question. Go ahead. So I said, do you really have to keep working and cloning and plugging before every time we want to make it? I'm, I'm sorry, I still missed it. I heard if we have again, and I missed the rest of the sentence. Could you say it one more time? Stop, maybe you, you type it in the chat. I think she's asking if we should um, fork and clone anytime we want to make any changes. Ah, yes. Okay, well, if so if that's the question, should I fork and clone 
almost always you will have to fork and clone. Uh, well, you'll at least have to fork in order to propose a change. Now you could, in some of these cases, propose changes to existing files just by doing a fork and then modifying it inside GitHub. But in order to add new files, it's much more difficult using the GitHub web interface. So for me, in that case, fork and clone is, is much easier than trying to figure out how to add a brand new file in GitHub. Oh, oh yes, okay. Maybe, and so I see it. Thank you, Esther. All right, so do we really have to fork and clone every time? Maybe, maybe I should be more precise because every time, no. Once you've done the, once you've done the first, first fork, you won't have to do a fork ever again on that repository. And once you've cloned it locally, you won't have to do the clone again locally. You, you, a clone is, is a good copy and you can use that copy. Uh, if you were to erase that copy on your local disk, then you would need to clone again. But for, for so, later pull requests to the same repository, fork and clone you do just once. Now there, there is, a, I guess there's a subtlety there that if you're working on something that moves faster, like Cynthia's changes to Jenkins core, if two weeks from now she needs to submit another change to Jenkins core, there's an additional step she'll need to take to make her personal copy come up to date with the Jenkins copy that is upstream of her. Most of the plugins that you're interacting with, I think, are relatively low volume change, so you probably won't encounter that. Any, any, okay, got it, super. Thank you, Esther. Any other questions? All right, recording will be available. Thanks very, very much. And we're also available on the Slack channel. So if you've got questions outside of the times when we meet, please post them to the Slack channel. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you, Mark. Bye. 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 Bye.